Hi there, I've got six super simple tips for you about brain health. Really easy things, you're probably doing them, but sometimes things just need reinforcing, we just need a little bit of a reminder about doing them and how important they are and why they're so important. Because I always find once you understand a bit of the background, a bit of the science, it's much harder to stay on track with the things we need to do for aging well. Uh, but it's just getting that knowledge and reminding ourselves really regularly that this is what we've got to do. And brain health, reducing dementia risk is so important to me, as you might know. My mum had dementia. I spent 12 years caring for her. She cared for her mum who also had dementia. So yeah, I really want to do everything I can to protect my brain. So these are just some of the things I'm doing each day or certainly each week uh, to try and stay on top of that. So my number one is moving every day. Look, it's not rocket science. I really hope you know the exercise. I know you know the importance of exercise for aging well. But any form of exercise where we get a little breathless is good for our brains. Even if it's going for a brisk walk and then slowing down a bit, just pushing ourselves a bit harder, slowing down a bit, just having those intervals of slightly harder work and then a slightly gentler pace in whatever form of exercise has a very direct impact on the brain as we age. And research published late last year shows that exercise works on our DNA methylation. The way our DNA is expressed helps reduce inflammation and lower disease risk. And you know what, bonus points if your exercise involves something that works our brains as well. It could be HIIT classes where you have to remember a series of exercises yoga you know we focus on different movements dance classes we have to learn the steps you know, learning to dance has been shown to build new neurons and actually it doesn't matter if you're any good in fact it's better if you're not because it means you're working harder to learn you know, if it's easy it's not working your brain you know, dancing learning to dance reduces the risk of alzheimer's and increases that neural connectivity that we are after. Number two, keep curious, seek novelty, seeking out new experiences, keeping curious about the world helps keep our brains sharp. Ask questions, talk to strangers, which is one of the best workouts we can do for our brains because they're having to work so hard, they're getting so many new messages when we're talking to someone knew they're processing that information very, very rapidly. Learning a new word activates visual and auditory neural processes as well as memory. And doing anything new that's positive, that's fun or enjoyable, activates a growth mindset, which rewires our minds, helps our brains to grow. So you are what you practice. So if you proactively embrace a growth mindset, then you're rewiring your brain and effectively changing your mental state. So the more you work to grow your brain, the more you're rewarded with that growth mindset and further growth. It's a kind of win-win. Another thing I'm making sure I'm doing at the moment, um, number three, is combining oily fish with B vitamins. If you don't eat fish, think about a supplement of marine algae. I'm a huge fan of oily smash fish that stands for salmon, mackerel, anchovies, sardines and herring. They provide the omega-3 fatty acids DHA and EPA which are vital for brain health. And our brains need plenty of B vitamins we have more v B vitamins in our brains than the rest of our bodies. And omega-3 is what transports those B vitamins across the blood-brain barrier into our brains where we need them. 
And an Oxford University study found that B vitamins only slow dec decline in cognition when they're combined with higher levels of omega-3 fatty acids. So in the study, people who weren't consuming enough EPA and DHA weren't getting B vitamins into their brains effectively. So you know, make sure you're getting uh, you know, the two things, B vitamins and omega-3, EPA, DHA. I'm also making sure I'm getting lots of choline in my diet, which also reduces the risk of Alzheimer's. Find it in eggs, organ meat like liver. I know not everyone likes liver, but I do, and it's a really good source of choline. Fish, particularly salmon, again, you're so good, so many benefits. And also um, plant-based uh, sources of choline, shiitake mushrooms, soya beans. I love tempeh, which is a kind of fermented soya bean. Like It's like a kind of cousin of tofu. Red kidney beans and the cruciferous vegetables, particularly cauliflower, really good for choline. Next thing. We're up to number four, meditation, or at least a quiet moment if meditation isn't your thing. Finding a quiet spot to take a few breaths and focusing on what's around you. Maybe try a grounding technique where you just focus on what you can see and what you can hear and what you can touch and smell. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. It's just taking a few quiet moments and um, I do Curtin Kriya meditation. Um, there are lots of YouTube videos that give you the music for it. It's chanting. It's a chanting form of meditation. And it has been found to help alleviate some of the signs and symptoms that precede dementia. Regular meditators are found to have longer telomeres. That those tips on the end of our chromosomes of DNA and uh, so I try and do uh, curtain kriya uh, each day it's only 11-12 minutes a day and you're chanting the sounds sa ta na ma sa ta na ma it's really weird you have to shut yourself away and make sure no one can hear you for a bit and Get the finger movements because you're stimulating these the the pads on the end of our fingers. Your brain's focusing on the the chanting, getting the words right, and it you can't really think about anything else, which is why it's such a powerful uh, meditation. Uh, I think my fifth thing is to actively pursue sleep. Deep sleep is when our brains go into housekeeping mode, clearing out the trash. Um, and I was recently introduced to the work of a musician called Kelly Howell. She has um, videos on YouTube again, or on, uh, she has music tracks on um, Spotify, um, sound, uh, there's one called Sound Sleep Delta Waves, uh, and it helps calm the brain waves, calm you down before sleep, um, which is really um, helpful to set we need to prepare for sleep and it's just one of the ways of doing that and uh, research was published a few days ago that uh, linked uh, a bedtime between 10 and 11 with reduced risk of heart disease and what's good for the heart is good for the brain so that's worth remembering final tip look after oral hygiene and when you're brushing your teeth, use your non-dominant hand if you can, because anything that we do with our non-dominant hand is um, really good for the brain, uh, it's rewiring it, and there are very clear links between the inflammation in the mouth and inflammation uh, in the brain. Gum disease bacteria is found in the Alzheimer's brain, so we've got to look after our health. If you need help with any of this, stay on track, drop me an email, hello at susansaundershealth.com, hello at susansaundershealth.com. Let's have a chat. Always, always happy to um, chat to people about aging well. So yeah, give, give me a call. Let's have a chat.